This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Rhapsody Pattern and Drafting Guide. Our innovative approach to garment sizing and drafting lets you take your measurements and plot them on a pre-printed drafting guide to get a better foundation for a perfect fit. Go to sewhere.com slash patterns to get access now. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue and I'm ZD Donahue. And we're going to get started. We're, oh, you have you have a I shout have out. A, I have a little shout out for Fred. Oh, Be- ZD said, "Can I give a shout out to Fred?" And I was like, "How is it different from any other episode?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think it was not the last episode, but an episode Sojo ago. episode. Yeah, it was about Sojo. And Fred thought that I had I, that I was like drunk or high, and I just want Fred to know that when we use that vodka, we use it on the clothes, and we don't drink. We don't spray I am it just, in our mouths. Fred, I am high on life. Just so you know, <laughs> I I I'm just was letting oh, you know. What? Oh, I think this I think this discussion took place in the zigzag group. Is what happened? There. Oh, it yes, did it. That's yeah. What happened. Uh huh. All right. But Ooh. but she thought Mallory and I were like a little tipsy because yeah. we were being kind of. No, you. Okay. Once again, transference here. They thought you were crazy. I think not me. I'm just gonna say. I think that's projection. Is you that... think it's transference? Whatever. I don't know. Here we go. Pro trying to analyze people again. Transjection. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so moving on to the seventh day, always clip your threads. Okay, this one's real hard for me. Uh-huh. I want to skip this sometimes. I'm just in the groove. I'm going, 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 mm-hmm. and I just, you know, don't want to, don't want to clip my threads all the yeah. time. But I've been better about it, yeah, because I have seen the the damage, the negative, uh, the yes. negative effects, consequences of uh, not yeah. clipping your threads. Yes. And what would one of those be? Mallory? Oh, well, one time, uh, you know, a week ago, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I was putting together this shirt dress with the five thread safety stitch, and then I was top stitching my seams. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. and I didn't notice it. But the overlock chain got under my top stitching. Wonder how that happened. Because, well, you yeah. know, because I didn't clip mm-hmm. it, and it was. It, I was like, oh my gosh, how stupid! And of course, this top stitching had gone through, and like, you know, sewn the overlock stitching chain right to the shirt dress every which where it could be. Right, I right. had to like clip every like, single yeah, thread. It's like you know, thirty two times. It's <laughs> yes. never like one place. It wasn't right. like I just. One thread sort of got tangled, yeah. and there was three threads that had gotten mm-hmm. tangled. I was like, "Oh my gosh, how silly!" So you gotta clip your threads, but then you also need to like discard them. Don't let them hang. Like that's very to true. Your clothes. <laughs> and, and I think here we can like interject because I don't think this is in the song, uh-huh. but it is good to have sort of like a trash bin or a trash receptacle area close to all the places that you're gonna wind up with little trash bits. And so it's good to have the trash little guys right. but it's also good to have little snips next to your sewing machine yes. which we do we do we actually have a pair of snips or scissors literally tethered to every machine every we machine have. has little pair of scissors um, we yes. used to tether them to ourselves and that's okay too but I also stab myself several times. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work And then work when for we me. had, then when we start having the babies and stuff, like trying to pick them up, and you, you know, yeah. you're wearing it around your neck or on, you know. I know a lot some, of people. Some zippy thing. Now, and when I was in the store, I would I wore scissors a lot. I think that Erin yeah. has like an apron where her scissors go. Right. Uh, but she and she worked in like a workshop. Yes. Like an upholstery yes. workshop. So yeah, gen- just how our studio is set up, I don't seem to need it like that. However. For some reason during this project, I didn't want to use a rotary cutter for something. I Well, I think I'd gotten really close to the edge of the fabric with a pattern piece. Uh I was really trying to conserve fabric. So I got out our Kai scissors. Which are amazing. Which cut like butter. They are like, yeah. It's like razor blades cutting through butter. And it's like you open up the scissors and they are, they're not heavy. 
but there, there's a little bit of like nice weight to them. They're substantial. Okay, and then you let yes. them fall down, and it's just like shoo, yeah, they're shoo, through like a guillotine. Anything. Yeah. And I was like, I want to clip all my threads with these. <laughs> they're huge shears. I mean, I'm sure. Which is a no, is a no no in my book of well, it wasn't things. next to yes. the sewing machine. Okay. I was over at the table, yeah. you know, clipping threads. But I think this was uh, what was important for me to kind of realize. Is it needs to be part of my assembly line process. Yes. Okay, so I can sew a bunch of seams. Yeah, and, and clip okay. them before you put them back and under the machine. So, you yeah. don't have to do it right then. Right, yeah. right. I'm like, okay, it doesn't have to be so tedious if I kind of like make it all, you know, make it right. its own step. Because that's what was going on there. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a little, I can't believe like well, my top you know, stitching caught all that and, stuff. And when we say to do these things, I mean, sometimes they may, may seem... Um, extra or not necessary in some way to you or, you know, mm -hmm. oh, we're being petty or we made this up so we had something to talk about or whatever. No, we're telling you from experience. Yeah. And, and developing these good habits keep you away from the bad habits it, well, and keeps, keeps you away from the disasters. It keeps you away from wasting time. Well, yeah, and, on... in, you know, especially like if a surgery. If, yeah. You know, if you have a long string someplace and your fabric gets up, you know, and it gets cut. Caught up under there. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you can be chop a chunk out of a project Game and you didn't over. want to. Yeah. yeah. When you, um, when you, I, what I see a lot is people won't clip the threads when they're sitting in a sleeve on a right. t-shirt. And then there's that serger thread hanging out yeah. from under the arm. People meaning me. Uh, but I just. Right. <laughs> I've done the thing where I've like, clipped the thread. Right uh -huh. and not disposed of it, yes. and then it's and hanging it out. Right, right. And I'm yes, like, how I've did that the... get there? And I'm I like, did... oh, I didn't. So I've also the next to our, you know, all of our machines, we have some sort of little trash bin. I would call it, yeah. Or, you know, some little catch-all where we can, um, you know, discard those things. They're out of the way, and they're not getting hung up in something else. The other thing about clipping threads is. And not throwing them away is they will get in back into your machine. Oh yeah, they'll get you know, they'll get into your bobbin area, yeah. things like that. No, you'll you'll have to clean them and up. You, you don't or want them, them into your power pedal. You, you know. Yes. Uh, our big thing is we get them in the wheels of our chairs yes. all the time, and I have to go around and, like debris chair wheels on occasion. Uh, the next on the eighth day, we say make clothes that fit. And um, actually, uh, the day we're recording this, Noah just posted. He's really. Um, Oh, I have. I didn't know about this. With pants fitting, uh -huh. you know, and so fitting can be really frustrating. Um, but what we want to say is, it's possible to get a good fit. You just need the right amount of fabric in the right places. Yeah. And I think the biggest pitfall we see, not everybody, but it's a big pitfall that we see, is over the overfitting. Fitting. Yes. So don't just because you're making the clothing, okay, it will. A lot of people will tend to be overly critical, I think, of self-sewn clothing. Right. I, I, I've tried to make the Lazo trousers. Do you remember that a couple years ago? Yes. And they just were, like, fitting weird on me. I didn't like them, and I got really frustrated with them. And then I saw a girl wearing a pair of pants like that, and she looked really cute. And I looked at the trousers, right. and I thought, oh, the, some of the issues that I thought were going on – in right. my trousers it's are just, going on with her. It's what we would call in design drape. Yeah. And it's yes. like, oh, it's fine that there's a little like, you know, quote unquote extra fabric in the back of the right. leg or or something like that. Um, you know, things that I was frustrated with, I was like, it's okay, leave it be. That's right. Um, but overfitting, I think a lot of people think that the all garments should fit very closely to your body. Um, and some garments do need to fit very closely to your body. Right. But especially as we get into making wovens and we're used to wearing knits. Right. You need to know that a little bit of ease is okay. It's, you know, that that's the biggest thing that I see. Uh, with well, that's why when everybody fitting. talks about making the crotch curb, you know, the crotch sausage, uh -huh. and I'm like, to me, that doesn't help you. Yeah, because, not. you know. You need to know depth because you're going to smooth out that curve. You right. don't want to match that curve. If you match that curve, you'll never be able to wear those pants. Well, and then we, okay, so that's for a woven. If you match right. that curve, you'll never be able to wear those pants. Right. And then over in knit land, when we do the leggings, almost everybody's crotch curve looks like a J. And right. it's fine because of the nature of that garment. That's right. right? So there's, there's right. like two sides of the same coin That's right. Uh, with the crotch curve. And so, yeah, you're not always going to want to exactly match your body. So your body gives you information. 
for right. sure. But it doesn't mean that it needs to be exactly like that. Uh, Rachel Kramer just asked in the group about making – she wanted to make like this pullover that has sort of a tunic or just right. a longer shirt um, that has this wrap skirt kind of thing to it. It's an empire waistline. And so she's saying, oh, well, I want to do this – Maybe with a rhapsody, or or I want to make a rhapsody that doesn't fit as you know uh, closely, or something like that. And I think that sometimes it is good to look at how a garment lays flat, because really she just needs to make that flare out, right? And and uh, you know, do this little you know mm -hmm. wrap skirt thing, and it's going to be fine. She may not even need to make a bunch of extra measurements if she's right. already got that base T-shirt pattern. You know, now she knows what she wants the silhouette to look like. So, anyway, if you make nice the clothes well, that. so our thing is make the clothes that fit. The reason that you want to make the clothes to fit is you will wear them and you will enjoy them. If they don't yeah. fit, you will not wear them. The thing that makes a garment look its best is that it fits and it drapes correctly it's it's not always the fabric or the trim or what you chose it to go with or you know what uh color is the collar going to be on a lot of times it's the fit if the fit is not right it's distracting from everything else well and it's all up to you too you know right there is a facebook group called sewing for my not pregnant belly and a lot of our members are in it i see them and i right. just kind of lurk in there i don't really um say <gasps> much you just boy i'm a lurker a boy, yep. uh and it's interesting because a lot of the people they come into the group and they they all feel they have this same problem and it's a problem that i've encountered before too where um you know just because of the shape of my body and where I carry my weight, people ask me if I am pregnant. <laughs> so that's not very nice. And it happens to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. People will talk about autoimmune disorders. People will talk about, uh, you know, all sorts of things. But there's not one solution because not everyone's comfortable wearing the same things. Some right. people are really looking for what they feel is hiding. And then some people are looking for something else and so i never want to you know say oh well the right thing to do for this problem is right. this because there are so many other there are so many factors that come into this i have fit two, i have issue two, i have that, two different size pants yeah because and it's funny because my husband just had a medical issue right uh -huh. And he's always been slim and trim with a six pack. And he's like what is this <laughs> and i'm like yeah welcome to my world he goes you know I'm buying two different size pants and keeping like an extra pair at work. And I said, I get it. Yep. I totally get it. I know what you're talking about. So that's the other thing. Your yeah. body can change throughout right. the day, throughout the month, throughout right. the whatever. And yeah, so it's really getting to know your body and knowing that you you don't have to completely duplicate it all the time to get <laughs> And know that maybe sometimes you, you have to have two different size pants. There you go. Okay, so make clothes that fit. But if you if they don't fit, you're not going to wear them. Are there... They're not going to look right. They're going to be uncomfortable. So you may have to work on that fitting for a little bit yes. before you get that pattern that's just right. Well, uh, like Rachel said, I want to make a rhapsody that's a little looser. Right. And then some people have complained. They're like, oh, well, I like my T-shirts tighter fitting right. than this. And hopefully with the tools we give you, you can do and that's, either of those and things. And that's why we sew. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, you want to know what the ninth day is? Oh, good. That's a good one, I guess. Get yourself a serger. Yeah, oh, uh -oh, uh oh Controversy, controversy coming up. There's no controversy. Go Not on. in this house. Just go buy you a You can't serger. live here in this home <laughs> if you don't believe in serger. Okay. So this is not us being... Well, a little. I mean, this is us being snobs. We know not everyone can afford a serger for sure, but they are so useful that if it is something that you've ever considered, if it's something that you're looking at. If you don't have one, you should be lusting for one. There you go. You know. um, we give you permission to lust, but sergers are so helpful. Right. So useful, especially when sewing knits, right? The serger creates an overlock stitch, and that is a knitted stitch. Therefore... It applies perfectly to knitted garments, knitted fabric. Um, I can't get by without knitted garments. <laughs> yeah, and so you can, you know, you can make knit garments on your sewing machine. And I did for years, yes, right. Absolutely. Right, absolutely. So you can do that. But the serger cuts 
and it makes this very different stitch right. that creates a flexible but durable seam well, on those knits. Right. You get the stretch and recovery from the stitch that you really can't totally, you, uh, totally yeah. mimic on, on your, on on your yeah, yeah, on yeah, your lock stitch so, machine. Uh, on the little blog post about the 12 days of sewing, we say, it just didn't fit in the song to say get a baby lock serger. But we are huge <laughs> fans of the baby lock sergers. Absolutely. They do uh, sponsor us, uh, but we would talk about their sergers no matter what. And the reason we let them sponsor us is That's because right. we like them. Because we love their sergers. Right. Uh, so we are proponents of the baby lock serger. We have an episode about why those are so important. But if you are getting into knits, you're going to find that a serger can be a really powerful tool for you um but we did just do you know we did that live broadcast it's been about six months ago now about active wear straps right and we did use the sewing machine we use the sewing machine to, absolutely to do some applications for right. some very stretchy fabrics right. uh so it's not that you can't do it but the serger with that special overlock stitch it's going to let you do some pretty amazing things and that's what ready to wear is constructed with Right. On on knits. That's what you're going to see. Well, and when people say, oh, you know, I get, I, I only use mine to finish my seams or something. Yeah. And I'm like, so? It makes it look really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do that too. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I, I do that too. I do use my serger, you know, when it's uh, applicable on my woven And sometimes well. you can use it on exposed seams and it looks really there cool. There you go. There, yes. And you can do so much cool so decorative sergers, stuff. So sergers, ser you know, yes, sergers work best on knits. But I don't think they have the limitations some people might think they have either. That's right. That's right. right. And we've done some episodes about that. But that is something that keeps coming up. We might have to do another one. Yeah. We might have to do another one. All right. Well, let's take a quick break before we come back for our last three uh, of the 12 Days of Sewing. Did you know that we, SewHere.com, have patterns? That's right. We've created drafting guides that give you more control of your garment fitting and construction process. Need to get started on the perfect t-shirt? The Raps of Tea is for you. Take your measurements, or those of someone you love, or someone who will pay you a million dollars, and plot them out on our pre-printed drafting guide. It's available as a tiled PDF or a large format AO file, so you have access to the drafting guide immediately after you purchase it. The Rhapsody instructions include info on how to draft for any body, no matter your size, proportions, or gender. Large busted stitchers get my useful tip on how to create the boob bump so that your shirt will fit perfectly, even if other patterns have failed you. Go to SewHere.com slash patterns to check out our offerings, including the Rhapsody. So, 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 sewing out loud. What's the next one? Yeah, what's the next one, Mal? It's your favorite. Uh oh. Make friends with your knee lift. Yes. Okay, why we were talking about this in the episode before last with readjusting with okay, you're sewing two weird curves together, a sleeve and, you know, an arm thigh, and the knee lift can be I mean, it's your bestest friend. Right. And the knee lift is the feature we're talking about lifts your presser foot for That's you. That's right. Okay. It's good. A, Give a little definition. It yeah. lifts your presser foot by you popping your knee yep. over and hitting a lever. Yes. And if you want to speed sew, if you want to readjust, no matter what, it's like having a third hand. Yeah. And you, you never have to take your hand off your project. Think about that. You can hold it where it is. Lift the presser foot. Move, adjust, whatever. Backwards, forwards, you know, to the side. Just scooch those edges back together a little well, bit better. Whatever. Like, if... You know, most of the time, you have your needle down in the I like, I oh, like to sew with needle down. A lot of the time. Yeah. Okay. So if your needle down, and then you can lift your presser foot, and you're holding right. on to your two layers of fabric. And so you can move one layer one right. way and the other layer the other yes. way. And you yes. can, you know, yes. you can adjust from the back, and it will hold things in place. And you get to use both of your hands. Well, right. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> that you just can't beat it. Like, if you're machine shopping, and it's 
a $100 difference or a $200 difference or something to get an e-lift, it will save you that much time. I mean, uh, there's, for sure. there's been studies, supposedly. I would love to see the study. I would like to see how they really do that, right? In the sewing machine journal. Right, right, right. You know, the journal of a, oh, the American what, sewing machine. Listen, I got my own little anecdotal study here. I know it saves ZD time because she, she's at a machine without an e-lift. All she does is bitch about she doesn't I do. have an e-lift. I bitch. So I go... I go, I go even if I'm on the surger without an e-lift, I'm like, oh, man, I'm on the wrong oh, surger. No. Baby lot really spoiled yeah, us I, by giving us one-on-one surger and uh, not on Well, another. you know, I just... T- can, I like having both of my hands free to do what I want with. Well, and the and, but yes. it, I I do believe it could save you up to thirty percent of your time, depending on what you're doing. I really do. And it, you know, some of those projects we've done, like make drapes for the front of the Or Street Studios yeah. or whatever that. Oh my gosh! I mean, come on. No, you, you know, it just you're ripping through this stuff. You're trying to do down and dirty, mm-hmm. and you don't have to and. And you don't, you're not pinning. You don't worry about having to pin because you can match things up. Because you can readjust, and right? Readjust you can always readjust. Easily. I mean, I and then people say I have a knee lift and I never used it. I just, just try, please. I think you will thank me later. Maybe we need to do a little mini course. We could. Where it's just a video of us being like, okay, cut out like you know right. some circles and some squares. Sit down at your machine. Oh, put your knee lift in. Oh, <laughs> machine applique. Tell oh, well, me yeah, what yeah. could be better because say you're doing a heart, uh-huh. you know, or you know, so it's a curve and an inside corner. Well, of all that applique that I do on like spandex on spandex, yes, I can't imagine not having a knee lift. It, right. It would, you know, I mean, my applique looks. Damn good. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. right. Uh, okay, and then <laughs> our our last two. These are these, these are, are a little the, uh, fluffy. I think, yeah. I think. So I I didn't think we could do this all in one episode, so I split it up. But these are a little fluffy. The eleventh day. Is yes. Listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't think that's so fluffy. Okay, if you didn't know, you're listening to the podcast right now. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think that's so fluffy or I, maybe we were looking for something to fit in, you know, the timing of the music or whatever. But I w- just this week in the Facebook group, there have been like three or four posts. Oh, I listened to the podcast and it said this. Oh, I learned this from the podcast. I would have never known this had I not listened to the podcast. Well, oh, I can't wait to get home. I'm in the car and it just said do this on the podcast. I'm going to go home and try it. So podcast isn't so fluffy well even though we, we might say, be fluffy sometimes no hold on we should say share the podcast right. so a big way that podcasts grow is through word of mouth and that just means even on social media or you know if you do see someone in person or something like that right if you could as a, a, a little christmas gift to us if you could tell a friend about the podcast or just share that you listen to sewing out loud right. on your facebook feed or something it just helps us get more listeners reach more people um and you know that's uh, good for us, and hopefully it'll be good for you, too, because sponsors, of course, love to see that we're, you know, getting new listeners all the time. But I'm a huge podcast listener. I don't listen to sewing podcasts because I'm not that much of a self-hating person. <laughs> or I, I get enough of that. But I listen to a lot of other podcasts about things uh, that... Are you saying you don't listen to your own podcast? I Is that hate what you're listening to us. <laughs> Really don't like it. I really sometimes when me... somebody says something about our podcast, I'll go back and listen, and I'm like, "Oh man, I don't see it that way at all." And well, they say, "You know," it's, I, or they'll say, "This was the funniest podcast." And I'll go back, and I'm like, That's "Okay, not funny." That's how we are. I mean, I yeah. listen. I have to re-listen to us for certain things, right. but it's not. I know some people, or they really like to edit their own podcast, mm-hmm. and I think I get so self-conscious, or I don't know what it is, but like, I'm not a big fan. That's called self-critical. Yeah, yeah, of doing that. And so, anyway, I, but I listen to podcasts in other areas of my life, and I just like to kind of get in the mindset of. You know, whatever. You know, with the with the personal finance podcast, with the I love to listen to that straight and curly podcast, uh, and they're sort of like lifestyle, right, self help sort of things. And I like to listen to what's going on and how they're dealing with like issues in their lives and right. business. And they're both um, like online people, so I get a lot of really good relevant information there. Uh, so anyway, I think that a sewing podcast 
a lot of people say, oh, how can you talk about so much stuff about sewing? Or isn't sewing really visual? Um, but if you're driving a bunch of kids around, or if you're mowing the lawn, or you got to do a bunch of housework, and you can get some information in there while you're doing something right. else, then it can prepare you for the next well, time you do get to sit down and, and do sewing And not machine. everything we talk about is all visual. Yeah, no, you know it's not. there there are certainly things like you know sewing for other people that you don't need to be sitting at your sewing Absolutely. machine to you know listen to that and appreciate it or whatever. Yes, or, or um, and that can apply in a lot of things actually. Yes, it can. Um, but that particular one, you know, we do have um, and and what about our tangents? Like our <laughs> tangents, I like you know we've got some good tangents. Sometimes. We do. Do you know what the twelfth day is? So this is it's like, about it's about tangents, right? It's no. so long and so happy. Yeah. So we do want to give a big thank you to all of our listeners. Uh, you are what makes this podcast possible. Uh, anybody who is a member of SoHere.com or has ever been a member, right. thank you so much. And if you want to find out about membership, you can go to SoHere.com slash membership. Uh, but you keep us on the airwaves. You contribute to our community in the self sewn wardrobe, and you make it possible for people to sew happy with us. That's so right. yeah, um, and also I was just doing the so long and so happy zine, and you know doing your signature on it and everything. And we do still have some more of those panels left. We do. Some people thought we were sold out. So you know, anyways, um, just so you know, if you want, we a did. We actually <laughs> had to go research that at one time. I think we were trying to find out when we. St I started saying so yes. long and so happy, and I think it was somewhere around the eleventh episode, something like that. So how yeah. many episodes have we done? Okay, I don't know yet, but I'm working. But we are on... on year. We have. We are finishing year three. Is that correct? No. We are finishing. Year four. Oh wow! You've used all that, <laughs> all of my life. <laughs> you've I used can't, all that time okay, of my I life. I can't believe the last it. Four I keep, years. Okay, because I keep counting. Again. Oh, that's right. Because Zelda is five. No, no, she's not. She will be five. Right, but, she'll be five. Okay, so it's all of 2016. Yeah. All of 2017. All of Eight. 2018. And uh, all of we started at the, in in. Well, we actually started like in August or something, I think, or October, but we didn't publish till January. Isn't of that what happened? 2016. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. So I'm, right. I am keep having to count and count and count again and slap myself. And, right. And get this. Some weeks we accidentally published two episodes in one week. And I'm like, oh, man. Ooh, we could so be, then we had to do another we one. We could be ahead. You know, right. so anyway, I'm going through and I'm numbering all the episodes because we have done some bonus episodes and stuff. So right. I don't know what number episode this is. But we did like 60 in the so, first year. So, so I was going to say, so we're, but we're somewhere around 200. We have to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or more. Or more. <laughs> that's podcast. That's not lives. That's not that's anything right. else. That's, that's just right. podcast. So thank you all so much. We hope you enjoy the song uh, in that it's festive for you. And uh, yes, thank you all so much for listening. Tell a friend about the podcast. We'd love to see what you are sewing to. Go over to the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. And yeah, uh, have a happy holiday season, everybody. I know that we did our tune to the 12 Days of Christmas, but we know there are lots of other holidays going on out there. Uh, and this is just a busy time of year for so many reasons. So have fun celebrating wherever you are, whoever you're with. Okay, ZD, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com. 